Don't miss the latest Primark in the Horus Heresy character series. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, checking out the brand new Primark model for Horus Heresy from Forge World. And as you can imagine, from this ginormously sized box, it is probably a good one, of course. Ugh, sometimes these things are a little bit difficult to get open. But the model inside, I assure you, will make it the trouble definitely worth it there. As you can see, it is the man, the myth, the legend, the sire of the 15th Legion, Magnus the Red, in the flesh, or whatever corporal form he decides to take, I suppose. This is easily the biggest model they've produced for a Primark. I mean, this guy, he is the Red Giant. I mean, after all, the Crimson King, all that, all of those monikas that are out there, and this model is ginormous. If you've seen the pictures that they put out of uh, how big this, this model truly is on the diorama base, which we actually have here too, once it pairs up to Lehman Russ, you would definitely understand just how ridiculously big this guy is. Now let's take a look at the instructions real quick because like I said, this thing is ginormous. Now let me zoom in here a little bit for everybody just to kind of show you what we're working with there. Now you can see all the parts, the exploded view here that kind of showcases everything and obviously belittles the overall size of the model itself right there because man let me tell you what this is on par with if not bigger than Gilliman himself in plastic right there so you've got all of your scenic base elements right here then it goes into all the rock blasts and all the warp fire chucks and blasts and contrails and everything there goes into the cape the crest the head everything here all of the little um I guess you could call these the uh, feathery bits. I, I, don't, I don't know what they're officially calling them, feathers. Yep, so that works. And then the, the torso, all the pads, all of your little straps and things. They're obviously spelt right there. I can never say that word. It's one of those that just perplexes me, but it definitely dates back to Roman times with all the legionnaires and stuff. And there's his blade and book chains and things like that. Because remember, he does indeed possess the Book of Magnus. Now, as far as the model goes, it looks pretty easy to put together. I mean, you take the overall assembly here, you add all the different capes and tabards and things, then the crests and the horns over top of the body. Now he doesn't have the nipple horns like we've seen in a lot of art out there. It's a little bit more classier. All the seals and things go on the back of the cape. Then all of your feathers, the hairs actually uh, looks to be three different parts. I mean, the main head and then the two different uh, pieces there. The right arms, the blade, the cape, more sashes, more parts, more books, more chains. It all kind of goes together. Then you get the overall model assembled, and then it's all rocks and warp fires getting thrown around the base right there. And then they give you the overall base guide and all the different parts because that does look a little bit complicated. And they have a little note here to only glue the top of this right here keep these open but glue the rock blast to the top right here so that you can still separate the model out from the base itself right here from the, the scenic diorama base right there so let's jump in let's take a look at these incredible details so of course you do have the base which is awesomely detailed I mean you can see all of the little crud the rocks obviously the, the base goes right in there just fine huh and Looks like there's even a little bit of material down on the rock itself. There's an Achilla, I think. Could be, or at least a stripe or something like that. Um, no helmets or legionnaire debris quite yet. A couple of pieces there that you're gonna have to separate. Here's the top that goes onto that little base right that was in there. And then of course where his feet are gonna lock into. And then you've got all the pros Prospero kind of glyphs and things glyphs of power on the steps right there it looks like the ground itself is starting to break apart some kind of temple looking doodads right there let's see if we can figure out no we don't have it separated off enough so it's gonna lock in here somehow not exactly sure if I had to guess I would say it's something like this just to give it that little extra 
play area. Oh, it could be like that. I don't know. Without the uh, the instructions to match it up, I'm kind of at a loss. Just kind of freehanding it there. Here's Magnus's cape itself, which you can tell is already pretty ridiculously huge. And look at all that fine detail. I mean, it's all got some. Uh, almost looks like some detail kind of woven into the cloak itself. And then at the bottom, you see all these patterns, the kind of thousand sun detail. You see all that horizontal kind of striping right there. I can't tell if that's design of it. Yeah, it looks like it's actually cut into there at some different angles. And then you've got all of this fine detail work down here, this mystical cloak kind of thing. And then on the inside, you can see where that kind of came through. So, and a nice, uh, folds there to add to the dramatic pose and then all the ribbons and things lock in there right there There's uh, let's hold that so here's some of the rock pieces that are gonna get thrown around and the warp fire Blasts are gonna get attached to it now. We it's an interesting time right now, right? Because we're coming into this looking at this as we already have 8th edition out, right? so remember there's no more theoretically there's no more, you know um, psychic powers as we saw in 7th edition over in 8th edition. Remember Horse Heresy I guess is still using 7th edition uh, based on you know just the additional things we haven't seen the changeover yet. So remember Magnus has access to a lot of um, powers you know witch fire spells and things that don't exist anymore in 8th edition 40k so there's already starting to be that kind of separation out there. One of the things that he does so well is um, the Nova Blast ability that uh, you know we saw back in the day, but now it isn't really a thing in Eighth Edition. Is it going to be? Is it going to continue to be a thing in um, you know Horus Heresy? It's hard to say. But that being said, he still has all of these uh, great psychic powers and the access to them. Obviously, uh, this Warfire ability. Um, so uh, <laughs> you know it's really it's really hard to say. But right now he can still do it, and those effects are going to attach to these rocks right here. Okay, and then here is Magnus's torso itself and it's all of its magnificence. Now we actually had to dig out a piece of RTV rubber out of that recess right there. And if you ever see those little light colored pieces of rubber, you're gonna wanna dig them out because they actually won't hold paint. But I mean, other than that, there is nothing wrong with this mold, this particular cast whatsoever. I mean, it's got the fantastic Aquila detail there, you know, obviously before he goes over to the dark side, all of the, the eagles and everything like that, the, the scarab motif up here, I mean, this is incredibly ornate armor, obviously done on a computer because of the symmetrical design between, uh, you know, both the left and the right, the symmetry is obviously very hard to duplicate by hand, and then you've got all of the areas back here where you're going to attach all the horns and everything and all the cape well here's the cape so the cape's just going to lock in right there which we may or may not be able to do because of the spurs let's try it the spur holes that no, should go in there there you go so now we kind of got an idea so he is indeed very similar to how he was pictured on um, the artwork in the Prospero book, which we're going to talk about here. We are going to go over his rules, but you know, like I said, a lot has changed with 8th edition coming out, but an incredibly detailed model. And I'll just give you an idea of um, the size of this particular miniature. I mean, here's Gilliman, right? Here's our painted Gilliman. So he's technically taller than Gilliman, like feet for feet, you know, not, not kind of bent over like that. He looks to be bigger than Gilliman, to be quite honest. Definitely at least a head taller than Gilliman himself. <laughs> That's pretty crazy right there. So I don't know. Like I said, one of the biggest miniatures out there. Let's take a look at the rest of his details here. So this is the other little bundle here. Okay, lots of stuff in here. So here's one of his shoulder pads that looks to have one of those horns sticking out. So the horns aren't exactly going to be on his armor, they're going to be on his shoulder pads right there, let's zoom in a little bit on that, like in cra crazy good detail with that crimson eye right there. Here's Magnus's head, which also is crazy looking, I mean he looks like a real, he looks like a real person right there, like you don't see, 
anything with uh, you know, any like singular eye or anything like that or anything that's, you know, kind of a busted up eye or just, a, you know, just the, like the stuff. You haven't really seen it. Like, I'm not seeing it here in the sculpt. Let me look at the... Yeah, even in the picture, it doesn't look... He just looks normal. I don't know. I don't know at what point his dabblings led him into that, but, uh, but that's for all of you uh, crazy people that really dig deep into that lore more than I ever will be able to and could probably tell us right in a comment <laughs> I say crazy person but I really mean lore maniacs <laughs> and here's pieces of all that warp fire you got your books you got your feathers you got your little straps and everything more uh, hair pieces to both of his other hair pieces there they're gonna strap on to either sides of him uh, more crazy tabard bits and let's see more feathers there's more tabards the pieces of horns that are going to go on the back of his uh what do they call it horned raiment i think that's what his armor is called and then here's his staff right here two parts of course incredibly well detailed i mean you might have to heat this up and bend it a little bit it's a bit thin kind of like we saw with korax's uh wing tips but man, that's pretty incredible. I mean, look at those little teeth, all of the power conduiting, uh, the incredible knurling here. And then you've got this, oh, hey, what's that? Is that the symbol of Zinch right there? <laughs> on the bottom of staff, whoa. Hey, let's get the Inquisition on that guy right there. Uh, I'm gonna pick these up real quick and put them back into the uh, container here because it's very specific on how it does it. And I wanna make sure that all these parts are protected because a lot of times we send these uh, figures out to some of our Patreon supporters. And I want to make sure we don't get any of this stuff busted up for them. Okay, there we go. Alright, so here's more pieces. So we've got more pieces of rock and uh, the warp fire. Here's more of the little straps and you can see that they've got the little nubs on the back right there. So they're gonna, these are the ones that are gonna lock into Magnus's cape. Um, some more tiny, tiny pieces. This is, looks to be the small book of Magnus with all the chains and stuff in a little baggie. Here's his arms, which I mean are literally longer than Gilliman's right there. So we know for sure this guy is definitely both bigger, both heads taller and also an arm's length or two. There's his uh, horns that are going to go on the back of his rammed, uh, horns rammed armament and then there's all of the little warfire pieces right there so incredibly well detailed little crazy sculpted fire and things like that that you can paint up in any color you know your pinks your purples your um, greens you know anything whatever floats your boat you can probably pull off right there and it'll look it'll look just fine because oh man I lost a piece right there man this is this is a very finicky kit and they have lots of um they have lots of little foam in it and I'm trying to make sure that we don't mess anything up here but it is definitely got a lot of parts this is obviously one of the biggest Primarchs out there and we'll lock, just lock him back in. So let's talk about the rules some. Like I said, we, um, we're going into 8th, so not everything works quite the way it used to, right? Which is, I think, the understatement of the century. So currently he has 495 points in the current edition. Of the horse heresy there he is magnus the red 495 points now like i said we saw this kind of this preview image right here of what he would look like and it's very similar to what he looks like of course right now that could have been an early render or something like that so obviously he has a lot of the the rules we would expect back in seventh edition the horse heresy uh the primark special rule which confers all of those special rules right there nothing new sire of the thousand sons obviously that's gonna have to do with exactly what you can take in your army when you field him uh, which we'll see on the next page art sorcerer the eye of the crimson king phantasma aura mind wrath very bulky and then there's his war gear all stuff we've talked about already uh, as far as on um, the model itself now over to here we're going to talk about, uh, first off, he's got the Sire of the Thousand Suns, 
which is going to explain that uh, the segment, segment squads and Legion Terminator squads may be taken as troop choices for T-Sons. Uh, primary detachment with Magnus is a warlord. Arch Sorcerer, he is a Psyker with the mastery level of 5 and harnesses warp on a 3 up when attempting to manifest powers. Um, for him to suffer perils, his controlling player must roll 3 or more 6s when attempting to manifest a power rather than usual 2. Any result of 1s on, on the perils of the warp is re-rolled. So not only does it take him uh, the odds already go down already, but he can roll reroll once, which we know in eighth edition has already changed as well. So this is kind of kind of a weird, bittersweet kind of review right here. He ran, randomly generates five powers uh, from a combination chosen from the following: to psychic disciplines, telekinesis, pyromancy, divination, tele telepathy, santic demonology, and biomancy. You may, for example, generate two powers from biomancy, two from telepathy, telepathy, and one from um, divination. So, long story short, a lot of people were just trying to get that Nova, um, you know, that Nova Blast that was on Santic, and then you could throw it out and you have uh, extra abilities here like you're about to see. Horned uh, Raymond, which is going to give him a 2 plus armor save, a 4 plus invulnerable save, and reduce destroyer special, uh, special rule weapons of wounds inflicted by 1. And then his blade is a plus 2 strength AP1 melee force 2 handed weapon. Sci-Fi Serpentia is his handgun, which may or may not be a living uh, construct of psychic energy. It's 15 inch range, strength 8, AP2, Assault D3, Soul Blaze. And Soul Blaze is uh, another great combo here that's just going to cause additional root wounds, obviously based on 7th edition. The Eye of the Crimson King allows him to basically have ignore cover as long as they're within a line of sight and they can't be inside a transport vehicle or building. So basically no cover saves for folks, which uh, pairs very well with a lot of different things, uh, you know, on the psychic power kind of side of things. Phantasmal Aura, uh, enemy du uh, attacks directly at Magnus or any infantry he has joined, suffer neg one to hit, barrage weapons, um, add plus one to the roll scattered where applicable, mind wrath, uh, so when manifesting a Witchfire power, Magnus the Red's controlling player can de declare the use of Mind Wrath. This must be done before dice are rolled to manifest the power. Um, the roll required is increased by plus two. However, the power is successfully manifested at 2d6 to any listed strength and double the listed range. If this would result in a strength value of 11 or higher, the attack has the Destroyer special roll. And here's where it started getting a little wacky, at least in Horus Heresy and you know, using the seventh edition rules because now, yes, it might add additional to cast, but when you do get it off, the average roll is seven. So, you know, to get it off, so if you take something that has obviously a strength value of four or five, you add seven to it, now you're already at 11 or 12, it's obviously going to have the destroyer special rule. And he has a lot, there's a lot of ways, you know, that potentially he could, um, you know, re roll that and get that off. So it was creating a little bit of contention there, and it, it still made might be perfectly fine rules is written but you know when you're doing things like um, like I said there's a lot of powerful powerful spells out there um, let me just show you the one that everybody was really getting I want to make sure I quote it correctly um, so for Santic there's a power called cleansing flame which is really just it's it's good in and of itself strength 5 AP 4 assault 2d6 and Norse cover soul blaze but the, the key is that it's a Nova power, so it radiates out 9 inches. So now if you pop this out, it's going to radiate off 18 inches. <laughs> uh, and I think you already figured out the rest right there. So it's going to have the Destroyer special rule. Uh, it's going to add 2d6 to any strength listed. So obviously, you know, your average roll is 7, right? So now you're going to get up to 12. You're going to have a strength 12 D weapon emanating out from Magnus at 18 inch range. Uh, so it causing to each unit 2d6 ignores cover runes. Not that it ignores covers a thing because that was already established that he can do it with, fan, uh, with the Eye of Crimson King. So Magnus is a psychic shithouse of awesomeness in Horus Heresy. Now, will these rules continue to be in effect in 8th edition? It's hard to say. But that being said, if you are playing you know, the pure 7th edition rules using Horus Heresy, well then and you play in Thousand Suns, 
I feel like he's a no-brainer if you got the 15, you know, the 500 points to play with him. But obviously, you know, being a Lord of War, there's additional restrictions there. <laughs> so you might not always get to play with him. But if you do, Magnus the Red <laughs> might be the O-penis. <laughs> Follow for sure. So that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoy our latest Primarch unboxing. There are all of the previous Primarchs here on the channel as well. If you like our features here, make sure you subscribe to us and make sure you turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on our videos when they go live. Uh, I think we publish about 40 a month, believe it or not, there. And head on over to longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos become a veteran of the long war today.